Hi, I'm Joe from Scroy Innovations with another Knight Power Sports product. This is the Articat Dragon Kit. Inside the box, you'll get our paperwork. Don't forget to sign up to win a free product every month. Sticker, a link to this instruction video you're seeing now. The manual four wheel drive actuator, a parts bag, bracket, screws, and some other parts there. And the tank lever to shift you from two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive along with the auxiliary button to control whatever you'd like. So the first step is going to be to take this flat mount and attach it to the actuator just like this and use these three flathead screws to secure it. Next, we're going to raise the quad off the ground and take off that wheel so that we can gain access to the actuator and the diff lock. The next step is to remove your four wheel drive actuator. The four wheel drive actuator has three screws holding it in, one down here, one over here underneath your tie rod, and another one in the back of it that you won't be able to see. This is where the location of the back screw is. You just kind of got to reach around and find it. Once you get the actuator out, unplug it, lift up on this tab, and pull the actuator out, and that is removed. Uh, a little bit of oil may leak out of here if your diff is full. Next, take the supplied connector plug and plug that in there. Next, remove this plastic. This will have two fasteners of those push fasteners there that you pop out with a flathead screwdriver or the removal tool. And then it just slides and bends around this piece there like that. Take this off. The wire that comes from your two wheel drive, four wheel drive switch, follow that down. And that is kind of pried behind these two little metal bars there going to unplug that at the connector down here just follow it from your switch all the way down and unplug it that's this connector then the switch is held in with flathead screws which were totally stuck in mine so if you have that problem um i believe they were flathead i'm not sure what they were exactly but what i did was i had to cut a groove in it in order to get a flathead screwdriver in there and pry it out. That's just one method to get out stuck screws. So I now have three millimeter uh, socket cap screws in here, which is what comes with the kit. New screws come with the kit. So don't worry if yours are wrecked, it comes with new screws. Next, we're gonna install the tank lever. The first step is to route the cable down to your actuator. Make sure that there's no sharp bends or kinks or anything in it. You want it to be as straight as possible. Um, nice sweeping bends, no kinks. Also, the wiring, untangle this. The supplied connector will plug directly in to where you just unplugged your OEM switch from. And these spade connectors will plug into your accessory, whether it's a light bar or halos or anything, rocks lights. So get this down over here, this over here, and then 
attach the tank lever. This is gonna go underneath this handguard here. Oh, on top of the handguard here. Um, attach the tank lever back to your throttle housing with these supplied new screws. Plug this connector in where your original connector was plugged into. tight fit like that tuck these wires in there's no accessory on this ATV right now so I don't have anything to plug these into but they'll plug right into your uh, auxiliary device slide the wires and the cable behind this here use some cable ties or anything to clean this up and then put the plastic cover back on make sure that when you're turning your handlebars everything is loose and nothing is binding and now we can put the actuator on first make sure to route your cable away from any moving parts or the hot exhaust i found that going on one side of the uh, coolant line here was a good spot. It's going to end up right around this position here. So make sure there's no sharp bends or kinks or anything in the cable. Next, take one of the small O-rings and put that over the end of the cable like that. Then take your actuator and thread it onto the cable like this. Okay, get that on there to the point where the threaded uh, part of the cable is starting to come into the actuator. The lever is in four wheel drive right now, so I just need to move that to the two wheel drive position so that there's more slack in the cable. Now the cable can get popped into that hole and that slack will get adjusted out in a second. The next step, take the other small O-ring and stretch it over the shaft of the actuator here. Roll it right into the groove. And now we're going to mount the actuator. Again, make sure the cable is not getting kinked. Slide the actuator over the shaft that's coming out of the differential there. Line everything up so that the bracket is in the correct position. Just like that. It's gonna want to get pushed off because of the arm in the actuator. So now you can see here, everything is lined up. I'm going to install the three screws. This bottom one there. This one over here, kind of hard to see. I'm sure the tie rod's in the way of the video, but that one right there you could see. And then the third screw, just like taking the actuator off, you can't actually see it. It is behind the actuator. There it is, right there. OK. 
Okay, that's back one here is the one that you want to actually fully tighten first. Get that one tight, then come and tighten up these two. Now that this is installed, we're going to tighten this lock nut. Again, making sure that the cable is routed in a good way. And now we're going to start the cable adjustment. So we spin this adjuster, loosen it in order to tighten the cable. We want to get it to the point where the cable is just snug and right now the tank lever is in the two-wheel drive position when we wrote it rotate it to the four-wheel drive position you want and get the four-wheel drive all the way to the locked in you want this to move about a half an inch so you see it barely moved there so we need to do a lot more adjusting so i'm going to unscrew this a lot more in order to get this to move further. It's still not far enough. I'm going to go back to the two-wheel drive position just so that it's easier to spin the adjuster right now. There's less tension on it. So I moved it a bit more. Move it to four-wheel drive again. See how far it moved. That's getting closer. You see the shaft didn't come all the way out of the differential. That's just because you need to move a little bit and then it pops into four-wheel drive. So you want to go just a little bit further than that. Again, it has to be about a half an inch. Um, it engages before half an inch, but a half an inch is fully as far as it can go. And you don't want your tank lever to be too difficult to rotate. So again, you see that pin didn't come out. The second you move, that pin will come the rest of the way out. And that's good. That you can measure if you'd like, but I know that that's good just from doing it a thousand times. So. Now we can tighten this lock nut against the adjuster and then slide the rubber cover down over the top of the adjuster. This is the four wheel drive position. This is the two wheel drive position. Rotate the lever back to four wheel drive. That's your four wheel drive. That's your two wheel drive. Next, we're gonna put the lid on the actuator and the O-ring goes on the lid first. Um, if you roll the O-ring, it's gonna to wanna to pop off. So it's actually better to kind of roll it the opposite direction and then push it over the edge and that gets it to stay on there just like that. Now we can place this on top of the actuator and install the four screws. So now that we have the cable adjusted, you can see the knob is in four wheel drive and the display is showing four wheel drive. When I go back to two wheel drive, you see the display came out of four wheel drive. And then again, when I shift into four wheel drive, display shows four wheel drive. Back to two wheel drive, display shows two wheel drive, just like it should. Uh, we don't have a auxiliary light hooked up right now, but when we do, this blue LED will illuminate when that's turned on, and we'll get a video of that soon. Now that everything's installed, you're good to go riding.